into an antiphon, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. And our Mass intentions on this fourth Sunday in ordinary time, in atonement for the sacrileges committed throughout the world, for Benito Eliton Jr. on his birthday, for the Salesians on their feast day, for our families, friends, and benefactors, and all those recommended to our prayers, for the souls in purgatory, for peace in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brethren, him you shall heed. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They have rightly said all that they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not give heed to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. 
The word of the Lord. On that, oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence, giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. Oh, that today you would O oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly affairs, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman or virgin is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly affairs, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. In the city of Capernaum, on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribe. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this a new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirit, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
and his reputation rapidly spread everywhere. That is how today's gospel ends, but it is by no means the end of the story. Jesus' reputation has continued to spread for the past 2,000 years and across all continents. There are countless souls whose lives has been touched and in some cases transformed. The Jewish people revered Moses They looked upon him as the greatest of their prophets, the greatest of God's spokespeople. But as we heard in today's first reading, Moses promised, your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves. That was the promise. The gospel, in dramatic fashion, shows its fulfillment. It's the Sabbath day, and in the local synagogue, Jesus is invited to preach. The people are deeply impressed, and in their astonishment, they ask each other what it can all mean. Jesus is a prophet like no other. His teaching is teaching with a difference, for he teaches with authority. Other religious leaders simply pass on what they learned from others, but Jesus' teaching seems to well up from within himself. And he displays this authority, not only in his word, but also in his actions. He puts unclean spirits, devils to flight. It's been said that Mark's gospel, Jesus does not merely appear on the scene. He explodes onto it. His appearance is dramatic. Who can ignore a man like this? Indeed, who is he? Where does he get the power from? And St. Mark's Gospel isn't only a drama. It's a challenge. What do we make of Jesus Christ? Who is he for me? Who is he? Not just in theory, but in practice. Not just on Sundays, but in the living of all daily life. And what about the evil spirits. Did Jesus come to conquer them? And in our modern scientific world, we perhaps smile a little at the very mention of such beings. But are there not evil forces in each of us? Forces that threaten our well-being and that of others, dark forces like pride, selfishness, lust, envy, and bitterness that can so easily come bubbling up to the surface. And might not these be described as evil spirits? And then on the world stage, too, if we think of wars, crime, ethnic cleansing, terrorism, the use of torture and 
global warming caused by human misuse of the world resources, we might ask what drives human beings to do these things. And if today's gospel highlights the authority of Christ's teaching, it is perhaps not surprising that the responsorial psalm should urge us to listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. And if we listen, what shall we hear? Many things, but it will all come down to this, that our God loves each one of us. God has prepared a place for each one of us in his kingdom. And so we need not be afraid because God can conquer every evil that threatens our happiness. And so we live for God and for each other. And when the people in the synagogue heard Jesus preach, they said, here is a teaching that is new. And when we truly listen to our Lord, not merely with our ears, but our hearts, then our Lord's teaching is always new, always carrying an appeal and a freshness as though we hearing it for the first time. It is always gospel. It is always good news. Amen. We profess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. To God, the source of life and author of holiness, we bring our intercession. for our church and parish community, that we may be constantly attentive to the voice of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Stephen, Bishop Sylvester, and all bishops, Father Cecile, and all our priests and ministers of the church, that they may truly speak the words of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our 
for the leaders of nations and officers of governments, that they may lead others by the authority of their own dedication and commitment to the justice and wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For families and households, that God's spirit of love may dwell in their midst, as we commend to the Lord all married couples and wedding anniversary celebrants this month, especially Michelle and Anthony Selmayer. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For Elsie Traya, Ernest James, Randy Kura, and all the sick the suffering, the troubled, and the dying, that they may know in their anguish the presence of Christ, the healer. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Eddie Jopas, that they may live anew in the light and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Create us anew, O God, in the life of the Holy One you sent to redeem us. Cast out of our hearts and minds the unclean spirits of hatred, prejudice, and greed that lead us away from you, and instill within us your spirit of compassion and mercy. Grant these prayers we make to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offered you, fruit of the earth and work of human hand. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hand. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exhortation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his one with resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen and Sylvester, our bishop, the order our bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their parting from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress that we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call on you. To our brothers and sisters, as they make their spiritual communion, may the grace of the Lord be with you. <laughs> 